Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Halloween Day. Yes, that's right. Uh, today is the final day of the 31 Days of Horror, guys. DBougie86 here again. And uh, it's been a blast doing the series, man. Uh, what I gotta say about uh, this series and what am I doing for Halloween, if you're gonna ask that. I'm pretty much going to work after I do this review. Yeah, I gotta get ready for work. Uh, it's just a normal day for me because it's in the middle of the week. If it was like on a weekend, you know, it would have been fucking amazing. But overall, I had fun this year. And I had fun watching some movies. Now let's get into the final day, day 31. And the film I got for you guys today is ironically titled 1031. Yes, uh, this was put out by uh, Scream Team Release it, and also uh, Grey House Entertainment. Uh, I believe it's... Uh, brainchild of a uh, composer and uh, producer Rocky Gray who uh if you don't know who he is he was the drummer for Evanescence and he did the music for The Barn and uh yeah pretty much this one involves uh five shorts directed by five indie horror directors uh and it was really cool to see uh some of the ones that were done by uh people now yeah I'll get into the same synopsis pretty much how this one opens up in the way it has a bookend scene and from beginning to end pretty much where uh these two trick-or-treaters are uh involved in like this uh horror in you know it's like a you know like one of those horror shows like Spinguli or Elvira and the main host is showing these five uh stories pretty much and that's the gist of it I think it would have worked a little bit better in my opinion if they had like her introduce each one, but that's just me. That's a little minor minute pick. I didn't mind it, but overall, you know, let's get into the shorts themselves. Uh, first up, The Old Hag, directed by Justin M. Seaman of the Barn fame. Uh, really cool short. It was a uh, very interesting. The aspect of uh, these two guys they're trying to shoot an infomercial for like a bed and breakfast. But then one of them sees something that the other one doesn't see. Pretty much that's how that story wraps up. I'm not going to go a little quicker on these ones since they're so short, pretty much. Uh, then the next story after that one is Trespassers, which involves a boy and a girl who decide to take a Halloween joyride to uh, this urban legend of this mansion where uh, murders happened. And uh, the urban legend also involves why the scarecrow is there. And that's pretty much the gist of that one. Uh, very quick pace and yeah, really cool stuff there with that one. Uh, next up is probably my favorite segment, Killing the Dance, which pretty much is about this girl and her little brother that end up going to like this dance roller buggy and then it turns into a slasher movie pretty much and it has some cool music and imagery in that one. I really enjoyed it. Uh, really fun. Next is the Halloween Blizzard of 91. Uh, very interesting short, uh, takes place during a blizzard on Halloween day and uh there's a little imagery that involves maybe Santa Claus also in this one plus uh maybe some naughty trick-or-treaters so you know that was a cool little one very fast paced also and the last one is the St. Haynes Slasher which uh was directed by uh Rocky Gray it was his directorial debut very interesting for a slasher movie because it has a, a lot of like subplot to it which is kind of like imagery and kind of style over substance with some of the imagery it, you know this is a first time watch for me also so i might pick up on more things with it uh on a second time view but overall i enjoyed uh that short also overall this is a very super fun anthology uh of course killing the dance directed by uh John William Holt, who directed the Dooms uh, Chapel Horror, which was my favorite short, had some great imagery and atmosphere to it, especially in the Roller Boogie, which made it special for me. Uh, great Halloween atmosphere throughout them. Probably my least favorite, with just the simple thing of atmosphere and style, was probably uh, the, uh, the Blizzard of Halloween 91, which had an interesting premise, but I wish I did kind of see some more snow atmosphere within that one. And, you know, uh, some of the other ones, like the one in the beginning, you know, it had a Halloween feel to it. But it technically wasn't like a Halloween-related story, if that makes any sense. 
but I still enjoyed it for what it was, you know what I mean? Overall, this was a super fun anthology that I think I'll be watching again on Halloween. I had fun with it, and I liked all the shorts. Like I said, even though I said one was my least favorite, it doesn't mean I hated it, you know what I mean? Overall, super fun anthology. Uh, great job by all the directors that were involved in this one. Uh, super fucking outstanding stuff, guys. If you haven't checked out 1031 yet, I'm going to leave the link below where you grab this from the screen team release. And check it out, man. It's fucking awesome. If I had to rate it, I'm going to give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. Like I said, for a first-time watch, that's what I'm giving it. Like I said, I had a few nitpicks, but... After, like, multiple rewatches, those might go away. You know, that type of deal. So, overall, super fun anthology. And, as always, yeah, 1031. All right, guys, that's it for this day. Uh, don't know when I'm actually going to be doing my update for uh, next month. I might wait till Friday just to take a day off because the rest of my vocals. Because, you know, I've been talking a lot this month, guys. you got to give me a little slack. But yeah, my update's coming up, and yeah, I'm going to space out reviews. I'm going to try to do more reviews than I usually do, you know what I mean? But not overly abundant, it's like one month, you know what I mean? So you get some good content coming up. I have a few ideas for videos also. And, spoiler plug, I actually dropped a Halloween episode of Cinema Attack on uh, iTunes recently. I'll leave the link below for that. It's a Halloween-themed show. Uh... Super fun show. Uh, we talked about uh, Flesh Eater and The Barn, which ironically one of the directors and the, the composer of The Barn was involved in this movie. So, you know, you know, I'm giving the spoiler plug, man. Check that show out. It was super fun. We had fun with it. There's some fun music within it. You know, uh, you know, <laughs> I got some great shows for Cinema Attack coming up, uh, especially for uh, November. It's going to be fun. We got a new commentary coming up. And, uh, you know, that's about it. A little quick update before I get out of here because I got to go to work, guys. So, as always, thank you for checking out my videos and uh, checking out my 31 Days of Horror Volume 4 series. And as always, guys, I'll see you soon. Peace out.